Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Microsoft Access Database application is like the red-headed stepchild of the Office suite. It works perfectly well, but Microsoft ignored it for a long time and even removed it from Office. The good news is this past spring, they put it back. And that's a good thing because you can easily move data back and forth between it and Excel. In this episode, I want to show you a few options how to do it. And you should know that Access exists in Windows only. There is no Mac version. So let's take a look and see how it works. Let's start by exporting data. So here I have an Access database with not a lot in it. I have a single table called Contacts. Contacts, let's open that up. And you can see it's typical contact information, ID, first name, last name, company address, and all of that stuff all the way out to a web address field. So nothing really crazy here. And you can see down at the bottom, we have 200 records. Also, this first field is an auto number. You can see it's an ID number. I'm going to go, I'm on the home tab of the ribbon bar. I'm going to go to view. And you can see the field called ID, that's auto number. Let's go back to view. So that means that access is simply starting at one and going all the way to the end and assigning those numbers. And when we export, that will get exported to Excel also. So let's go do that. On the ribbon bar, I'm going to go to external data. And you see we've got this whole section here for export. And we could export in so many different ways. Right now, we're concerned with Excel. That's what this podcast is all about. So I'm going to click Excel. So Access is suggesting a name, calling it Contacts. That's a good name. That's the name of the table. It shows, yes, it's going to be exported as Excel format. Now, this export data with formatting and layout, it's real tempting to go and click that. You might think, okay, well, that's good. I'm going to take formatting. Well, there really is no formatting. This is just plain old data. And I resist checking that because Excel will put all kinds of lines, bars, uh, dividing rows and dividing columns, and that's just going to get in your way. It's probably not what you want. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. Click OK. And it's just done. It says, do you want to save the export steps? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click Close. And now let's look at it in Excel. So here's Excel running. We have no files open. I'm just going to press Control O for my open dialog box, click Browse, and there is that file called Contacts. I'm going to double click it, and there we go. So there's no weird looking stuff on here. This ID, this auto number, this is just like you had typed the numbers in manually, and you see there's all of our info. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to close this. Let's talk about importing. Let me show you a file first before we go and import it. So back in Excel, I'm going to do Control O and open. So there's this other file I have I just put on there called 100 names and addresses. And you can see also pretty much the same thing. Now notice that the very first field here also is called ID. So this field, we're going to leave that in place. There's no need when we bring this into Access, there's going to be no need for Access to assign that as a primary key. What's also kind of cool is I can actually leave this open in Excel when I go and import it into Access. So let's go and do that. So back in Access, let me just close that. Yes, I want to save changes to the layout. Notice it's changes to the layout, not changes to the data. So now I'm going to go and import. So on the ribbon bar, I'm still on the external data tab. And I'm going to go in the import and link section. I'm going to go to new data source. From file, there is Excel. You notice there's all sorts of other options we have. So I'm going to choose Excel. And now let's go find it. So I'm going to hit browse. And there's that file we just saw, 100 names and addresses. I'm going to double click that. and. I'm going to choose Import the Source Data into a new table. Click OK. And there's the info we saw. You notice that this first row, those are 
the column header. So I want to make sure to check this box. First row contains column headings, so we have that. Go next. And here is where if I decide at this point that, you know what, I really don't want these IDs, I can choose not to import it. I can check this box, do not import, and then I can assign different IDs. I can let Access use its auto number, or I could type them in, or, or what have you. Let's say, let's go a little bit uh, across to the end here, and maybe if I decide I don't want the web address, same thing. I can click that web address header, select it, and I can choose do not import. I'm not going to do that for any of these. I'm just going to let them in. Go next. And here is where I need to be careful. See, if I let this be checked, this is uh, by default, let access add a primary key, look what's going to happen. Really don't want to do that. So I'm going to choose this second option, choose my own primary key, and then by default it's choosing this first column ID number. Maybe if it's a different field, a different column that has that primary key, I could click that drop down um, and choose it. Now also you got to make sure that this ID number, that they are all unique for each row. If there's any duplicates in there, right, because there could be duplicates in the Excel file, then Access is going to throw up and it's just going to give you that warning. So I'm going to click Next. And it asks me for a name instead of contacts. I will call this imported names and finish. I'm not going to bother saving the import steps. Click close. So here is a new table, imported names. I'll double click it. And there is that info that we saw, all the same stuff. There's that ID. Now, when I go to the home tab on the ribbon bar and go to design view. You can see that, yes, it's a primary key. There's the little key icon there. But you see it's a number. It's not auto number. So that's how we know that, yes, it is an actual number that's in there somehow, uh, but it's not the table that's automatically assigning an auto number. Now, this is great, but what if some of that info changes? Maybe that info is changing in Excel and you want that reflected when it comes in here. Now, there are ways that you could do things like uh, an update query and all that, and that's way beyond the scope of uh, this video. But what I want to show you instead is, instead of just importing the Excel files, a one-shot deal, what if we link it? We can actually have a live link between the Excel file and Access. So the first thing I'm going to do is just close that table. I'm going to go back to external data go back to new data source, from file, choose Excel, browse. So there's that. I'm going to use the same file that 100 names and addresses. But this time, instead of choosing import the source data as a new table, I'm going to choose this bottom option, link to data source. Click OK. And just like we saw before, there's really not much difference here. And the rest of the wizard, first row contains column headings, that's right. Go next. Notice this is not asking me if I want to exclude any of those columns, and we can't because this is a linkage. So uh, I'm going to call this linked contacts table. Click finish. It tells me yes, it's finished there. And notice that this has a different icon, right? So these are regular tables that exist in this database, these first two. This second one is a linked table. Let's double click it and open it. Looks pretty much like the others. What I want to do is I want to make a few changes in Excel and then we're going to reopen it here and see what happens. So first let's close this and let's go back to Excel. I'm going to make some changes there. Um, let's say this one, record number four, I see the address is 1900 Airport Way, and let's just make that an even 2000. And let's say this address, this is in record 7 BERT, is 600 Southwest Loop. And let's say, no, that's a typo. That really should be 800. And let's say this one in New Jersey, my home state. I'm going to change that there. And uh, 
I'm going to make that 8675309. So that's going to be that new phone. And I'm going to save this. You might need to close it in Excel, but I don't think I'm going to have to do that. Let's go back to Access. There's that link context table. I'm going to double click it and open it. And there is that address. Let's stretch this out there. Right, so we changed that in Excel from 1900, whatever that was, to 2000. This one we changed from 600 Southwest Loop to 800. And let's go over uh, here. And there is that phone number that we updated, 8675309. So that linking just saves you the trouble of having to re-import all the time if that's an Excel file that's going to change often. But what you should know, if it isn't obvious, is that you need to keep that Excel file in the same folder and with the same name. Because if you take that, if you rename it, if you move it somewhere else, then all of a sudden that link is going to be broken and access when you try to open this up, it's going to say, hey, you know, that file isn't there. One more thing. If you don't have access on your machine, log into your Microsoft account at office.com and click the link for install office. You'll see it as one of the options. So until next time, my name is Bob and this has been Between the Sheets.